Hello everyone, I'd like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Zahra Shajari from FUM. I was a guest researcher at AAU. It is an honor for me to be in the 20th IEEE EPAC and to have the opportunity to talk about dynamic performance assessment of next generation MVDC shipboard power system with distributed electric propulsions in the next 12 minutes. First of all, I'd like to talk about the problem and the necessity of dynamic performance assessment for the future SPS, which is the abbreviation of shipboard power system. The first reason is the ever stricter requirements of environmental emission, rising prices of fuel, its unpredictability, and growing demand for energy are the key drivers for necessity to develop greener and more economical ships. In this regard, it is expected that future ships should be greener, more economical, and adaptable with different types of power sources and complicated power consumers. So next generation SPS is a very complex system. The second reason is SPS is known as the core of all electric ships, so introduce new concerns from the point of view of system security and stability assessment due to its complexity. The third reason is SPS is a safety critical or life critical system, which means failure or malfunction of electrical components may lead to death or serious injury of crew heavy equipment damage or great environmental harm. And finally, the mentioned particular characteristic makes studies, analyzes, and assessment of next generation SPS dynamic behavior more and more necessary to prevent system instability. So a suitable and effective model scheme is needed for accurate evaluation of modern SPS dynamic performance to enable take full advantages of the system while keeps system stable. The novelty of this study is substantial from multiple perspectives. First, the proposed approach select and then integrates the best model scheme and control strategy for each component in order to provide better dynamic behavior evaluation under different operational modes. However, the modeling strategy for each separate component might not necessarily new. Second, the dynamic performance of an MVDC SPS has been investigated during the major operating states of marine power system include normal alert emergency in extreme and restorative. Third, utilization of the distributed electric propulsion for the SPS configurations offer more enhancement in flexibility, efficiency, performance, and robustness. This figure shows the structure of considered system for the next generation MVDC SPS. This integrated power system contains three separate power plants which transmit the electrical power into the three DC buses. These buses comprise the the main DC bus and could operate individually as well as connected by the bus tie circuit breakers in order to enhance system reliability and survivability. Moreover, the model used the emerging technology distributed electric propulsions in order to improve system efficiency, robustness, flexibility, capability, and reliability. The structure consists of three main diesel generators rated at 8 MW, an auxiliary diesel generator rated at 1 MW, a battery bank, a solid oxide fuel cell, five propulsion systems, five propellers, non-critical load, and non-shuttable load. In the next slide, the model approach along with the control method for each component will discuss. The first component is diesel generator system. Diesel generators are still the main power sources in the most heavy load island platforms such as marine power system. This figure shows a dynamic model of diesel generation system which is adaptable to the high power load. As you can see, the main components are prime mover, excitation system, and synchronous generator. This figure demonstrates the prime mover which consists of a diesel engine and a governor. The prime mover converts fuel energy into mechanical energy by combustion in diesel engine for the first step and then mechanical energy converts into the electrical power through a governor. This figure illustrates the basic configuration of excitation system type DC1A from the IEEE standard excitation system. The excitation system provides the required full current to the rotor windings of the synchronous generator. The next component is solid oxide fuel cell as an alternative power source. Currently, utilization of fuel cell technologies in the SPS are on the rise due to high reliability and efficiency as well as low level of air pollution and noise pollution. However, SOFC is the most promising technology over the various types of fuel cell in the SPS. This figure shows a schematic diagram of a SOFC generation system. This configuration includes a SOFC stack, a DC-DC boost converter, along with a fast voltage controller strategy for the main DC bus. It should be mentioned that the energy density and the power capacity of SOFC is a small in compared with diesel generation system. According to this, they usually use as an auxiliary power system. In the recent years, onboard energy storage devices and the associated technology have become widely accepted in the SPS as an emerging technology due to 
reliability enhancement and fuel consumption reduction among different types of onboard ESS technologies high energy density lithium ion polymer battery has been taken into consideration because of efficiency increment this figure indicates the structure of battery energy storage system which consists of a battery bank a bi-directional DC DC converter in addition to a three layer hierarchical control system a MATLAB function has been defined as a management system in the third control layer it has been in charge of battery on off and charge discharge control according to the system operating states. The propulsion system provides the required driving forces from the main distribution network for the SBS. According to the power requirements, the propulsive motor in the electrical propulsion system could be selected as either an induction motor or a synchronous motor. In this research, the considered propulsion module is a field-oriented control induction motor drive. FOC technique is one of the most proper speed control strategy for an induction drive. This figure shows the detailed implementation of FOC for an induction machine. As I mentioned before, in this paper, system dynamic behavior in different operating states investigated in the most common scheme. Five operating states have been considered for the SPS based on system level stability and security, normal alert emergency in extremist and restorative states. However, since in the alert state the system is not still insecure, four scenarios are considered and evaluated in this study, which describes in the next slides. The first scenario is about the normal alert operating state. In this scenario, two operating states considered as one due to system stability. In the normal operating state, the main objective is to keep the system in this state by applying control actions in the alert operating mode and in case of any changes in the network configuration such as load changing or equipment outage. Preventive control actions like through dispatching the generation need to be implemented to bring the system back to a normal condition, otherwise it goes to emergency mode. In this scenario, three different ship motions are considered, ship acceleration, ship maneuvering mode, and cruise mode. This figure presents the active power of main generator, active power of auxiliary generator, active power of system total loads, which, which are contains propulsion ship service loads and power losses, active power of SOFC, active power of battery, and battery state of charge. This figure shows that initially the ship is at a standstill mode and goes in for acceleration mode to a speed up. At t equal 0.5 seconds, ship reach the desired speed and subsequently continues to move in cruise mode. At t equal 2 seconds, the battery bank has been connected to the system and its rate in charge is 96% which decreases into 56% at equal 3.5 seconds. At equal 5 seconds, the battery has been disconnected. And finally, ship maneuvering performance starts at equal 6 seconds. This figure demonstrates the propulsion system behavior during this three displacement motion and the main DC bus voltage. The yellow line shows the measured and the blue line is the reference diagram. Finally, this figure illustrates the um, SOFC voltage and current along with boost DC voltage and current. The second scenario is about the emergency operating state. After several contingency and lack of proper control strategies, the system enters into the emergency state. So the system calls corrective control actions to bring it back to a normal operating state directly or through the alert state. These actions consist of load shedding, generation shedding, separate fault zone, and etc. In this scenario, assume that the server fault occurs on the circuit breaker of the auxiliary generator in the first power plant and causes it trips immediately. This figure shows the active power of generation and demand side. As observed, the output power of main generator exceeded its nominal value after 30 seconds and causes of an overloaded generator, so the system transmits to the emergency mode. This figure indicates the active power, the rotational speed, and the electromagnetic torque of propulsion system. Finally, this figure shows the output current and voltage of main and auxiliary diesel generator. The output current of main generator and the output voltage of auxiliary generator increase after the outage. Also, the current of auxiliary generator became zero after 30 seconds. The next scenario is about the in extremist operating state. In this operating state, the system faces loss of partial loads and power generation could not meet the whole demand. In addition, operating constraint violation occur in the system. When the system breaches this state, it is not possible to bring it back to the emergency state. 
In this scenario, suppose that the second power station operate in isolation from the main distribution network. In addition, the battery is initially disconnected at 2 equal to 3 seconds. A super fault occurs on circuit breaker of the main generator and causes it trips immediately. This figure shows the active power of main diesel generator, active power of load, and the voltage of main DC bus. As you can see, all of them became zero after the outage. Also, this figure demonstrates the performance of propulsion systems. The next scenario is about the real restorative operating state. In this operating mode, the operator applies restorative strategy to restore the whole system. Depending on different scenarios, the system could bring back to either normal or alert condition. In order to restore the system of second scenario, several control actions could bring the system back into the normal mode. Non-vital load shedding, propulsion system speed reduction, and utilization of operating reserve from the second power station in order to supply vital loads in the first power plant. However, it seems the third strategy is the best strategy due to keeps the primary equilibrium state of the system. According to this, at 2 equal 4 seconds, the battery has been connected to compensate the required power generation and in in order to avoid main generator overloading, this figure indicates the active power of generation side and battery state of charge. As shown after 4 seconds, the system returns to the normal state and becomes stable. This figure shows the active power of total loads and the main DC bus. For restoration of the system in the third scenario, as the system operates in island mode, the only strategy is non-vital load shedding along with using battery to drive the propulsion system as a non-shedable load. However, the active power of the battery bank is not sufficient to run the propulsion system at its primary speed, hence at equal uh, 3.2 seconds, the applied torque has been reduced, battery bank connected, and all non-vital loads have been disconnected as shown in the figure. This figure indicates the propulsion system behavior and the main DC bus voltage. Finally, I'd like to close this presentation with summarizing the main achievement of this research. This paper proposed a comprehensive mathematical modeling and simulation approach with proper control strategy for the future MVDC SPS for accurate evaluation of system dynamic behavior on the various operating modes comparing with the other existing propulsion, the proposed modeling strategy selected and composed the most suitable model for each electrical and mechanical component. Utilization of distributed electric propulsion in combination with alternative power sources and energy storage devices in the proper ne next generation MVDC SPS enhanced the total system efficiency, robustness, flexibility, and reliability, as well as reduce environmental pollution. The simulation of base model and all the drive models could be utilized as a standard set to integrate into simulation program in usual software libraries or web-based libraries which are used for the study of system-level dynamic performance of SPS. This model facilitates and accelerates the system-level studies across a wide range of dynamic events and different operating states, so the proper simulation approach could be used and useful for long-term or repetitive simulations. And finally, the model could be beneficial for system security and stability assessment, operational analysis, optimization, control, and power energy management. In the end, I sincerely appreciate your attention. If anyone has any question, please feel free to ask.